Okay, good morning from my side. Welcome everybody. This is Professor Danny from American English School. It's good to have you all here, guys. Welcome in. It's 10.30 in the morning here in my country, in Brazil. By the way, uh, okay, as many of you already know, uh, I am Brazilian, but I, I was brought up in an American colony in Brazil. And I've learned how to speak English since I was born. And I've been teaching English since 1990. So that's, you know, pretty a lot, you know, that it, been, it has been uh, around 30 years I've been teaching English. Okay, so today we're gonna practice vocab, uh, preposition phrases. We're gonna start with vocabulary bank, prepositional phrases. So let me tell you a little bit about prepositional phrases. Just a moment, guys, I'm gonna mute all the microphones. Don't worry, okay, don't worry. I am going to call you to the mic so you can participate with us, okay? And when I call you to the mic, I am going to unmute you, okay? I am going to unmute you and you can come to the mic and we uh, are going to practice prepositional phrases and lots of vocabulary. So first of all, let me tell you what is the meaning of prepositional phrase, a prepositional phrase. A prepositional phrase is a group of words consisting of a preposition, okay? It's object and any words that uh, modify the object. Most of the time, a prepositional phrase modifies a verb or a noun. So these two kinds of prepositional phrases are called adverbial phrases and ad adjectival phrases also. Okay, so here's a tip I'm going to give you on prepositional phrases. So want to make sure your writing always look great. So don't forget to check here, okay, my Facebook page so you can get lots of tips, okay, uh, and save uh, your misspelling, correct your misspelling, punctuation mistakes, and other writing issues, okay, too, are gonna get, you're gonna get lots of tips on that too. All right, so at a minimum, I would say that a prepositional phrase consists, as I said before, of one preposition and the object it governs. So the object can be a noun or a gerund, a verb for, uh, form ending in uh, uh, ing, ending in ing that acts as a noun or a clause. Let me give you one example, a very simple one. He arrived in time. Is she really going out with that guy? So to these two basic elements, modifiers can be freely added. Another example comes, he arrived in the nick of time, in the nick of time. Is she really going out with that guy? Okay, gorgeous and tall, one. So some of the most prepositionals, prepositions uh, that begin Prepositional phrases are to, of, about, at, before or before, after, by, behind, during, for, from, in, over, etc. Okay, so when a prepositional phrase acts upon a noun, we say it is behaving adjectively because adjectives modify nouns. A prepositional phrase that behaves adjectively is called quite logically an adjectival phrase. The example here, the cat is in the middle, the cat in the middle I mean is the cutest. The cat in the middle is the cutest. I always buy my milk from the convenience store on Main Street. 
My mother has always wanted to live in a cabin by the lake. So in the first of these sentences, in the middle, answer the question of which cat the writer thinks is the cutest. Similarly, on Main Street gives us information about which store the writer is describing. So let's get into this lesson. Let's do some exercises here. We have to match the prepositional phrases in bold with phrases A or B. So let's start with the first one. Just a second, guys. I'm gonna just put it a little bit smaller. Try to put it smaller here, the screen. Here we go. So let's start with the first one. The kid was on the verge, on the verge of tears. Uh, A or B, what's the meaning of that? At the point where something is about to happen or without planning something, raise your hand, use the, the icon here on Zoom and I'm gonna call you to the mic, you can give your answer or you can use the chat section to give your answers. Come on. Okay. Um, I have two participants that has just uh, risen their hands. Let's start with Diana. Okay, Diana. The kid was on the verge of tears. A or B? A or B? Constanza said A. Okay, Fatima has just written, um, rose her hand. Rosen his hand, her hand. Okay, that's right, it's A. The kid was on the verge of tears at the point where something is about to happen. We went to Madrid on impasse without planning something. Number three, only armed guards kept the mop at bay. What's the meaning of that? Having nothing, nothing to do, prevent from attacking or coming closer. Come on. Number uh, three. Number three. Come on, number three. Number two, number B. three, I mean. It's B, driven from attacking or coming closer. Coming, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm, that's right. And number four? Having nothing to do. Having nothing to do, that's right. Five, I'm in the dark just as much as you are. I'm in the dark just as much as you are. And in the same situation as others or not knowing because you haven't been, uh, been told? In the same difficult situation. In a difficult situation, that's right. Okay, now um, most newspapers are in the same, in, in the same boat. Number six. What about number six? B. Number six, you think it's B, not known because you haven't been told? What do you think, guys? I've just said that you're right, but you're not. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you that. Five, the meaning of five, I'm in the dark, it means not knowing, not knowing because you haven't been told. If you are in the dark, you don't have the answers. You don't have the answers now. But, and if you are in the same boat as, as others, it means that you are in the same situation, in the same situation the other one is. Usually this is something also ne uh, uh, always negative, I mean, always negative. 
not positive, okay? In the same boat, in the same difficult situation. Okay, now let's go to number seven. What's up? You're a bit out of sorts today. Feeling ill or upset? Or it's forbidden to go there. That's easy. Feeling ill or upset. Yeah, feeling ill or upset. You're a bit out of sorts today. It means you're not feeling well. You're not feeling well. You're, you're feeling ill. You're feeling sick or upset. Worried, up or upset. So the forest is out of bonds to students. It means it's forbidden to go there. Out of bonds, out of bonds to, it means forbidden to go, okay? To go there, out of bonds. Okay, let's check together the answers, guys. Here we go. So we have number one is A. The kid was on the verge of tears. It means at the point where something is about to happen. And B, uh, number two is B, of course. We went to Madrid on in pus without planning something. Number three, only armed guards cap the mob at bay. This means prevent from attacking or coming closer. So three, it's letter B. I was at loose end and a bit bored. And by the way, guys, number three and four, I think we skipped that. Okay, but that's okay. Num I was uh, at a loose end and a bit bored. Number four, it means having nothing to do at a loose end and a bit bored. I'm in the dark just as much as you are. It means not knowing because you haven't been told. If you're in the dark, you don't have any answers. You don't know about something. Most newspapers are in the same boat. That means in the same difficult situation, in the same bad situation or problem. As I said before, that's connected with the negative situation or problem. What's up? You're a bit, uh, bit out of sorts today. It means feeling well or upset. The forest is out of bonds to students. That, it, it, that means it's forbidden forbidden to go there, out of bonds. You're doing a great job, guys. Let's go to letter B. Complete the sentences with the prepositional phrases above. You need to change the form of one of the phrases. I think we're, come on, I think we're what? Try to remember the uh, prepositional phrases up there. I'm going to scroll a little bit uh, more. We have out of bonds, out of sorts today, in the dark, in the same boat, at a loose end, at bay, on, ver on the verge of, on impasse. Number one, I think we're or were -na 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 -na, of a full scale uh, riot. We can't hold the crowd -na -na -na, for much longer. Come on. Which one? Which prepositional phrase fits uh, correct here, correctly here? Come on. Number one. Give, give a shout. Come on, give a shout. Let's see here. Constanza said on the verge of, that's right or at bay, okay? We can say at bay or on the verge of. Good job, you got it, Constanza and um, Constanza and Constanza. At bay and on the verge of. Number two, guys, come on, number two. Sorry, but everyone's feeling slightly what? Da -na -na -na, today, we're all, ta -na -na -na, Workers and management alike worried about losing our jobs. Uh, the first is out of sorts. Out of sorts. Or one more we can use. Uh, 
out of sorts and come on guys one more prepositional phrase to number two we have out of bonds out of sorts today in the dark in the same boat at a loose end at bay on impasse on the verge of or uh, on impasse in the same boat in the same bowl, Talad uh, has just said that too. You're right, guys. In the same bowl. Number three, we were -na 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 -na, on Sunday, nothing planned. So -na 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 -na, we decided to get in the car and head to uh, for the beach and head for the beach. On impulse. We were on, on, on impulse. On in pass. Mm -hmm. And? Or? I mean, there's one more. There's one more we can say. At a loose end? At a loose end. So we could say the first part, let's use at a, at a use end. The first one, at a loose end today, we're all, okay, then we're. We're all um, on in pus, mm -hmm. on in pus, and pus and poos. Okay, so at a at uh, at a loose end. Okay, we were we were uh, at a loose end. Mm -hmm. We were at a loose end on Sunday. Nothing planned. So. On in, in pools, in pools, we decided to get in the car and head for the beach. Got it? Yes. Number four, the border area is -na 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 -na, to journalists completely off limits. I have no idea why. I'm as much -na 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 as you. Uh, out of bounds. First one is out of bounds. That's right. And the second? The border area is out of bounds to journalists, completely off limits. I have no idea why I'm as much. In dark. In the dark. In the dark. Yeah, yeah in the dark, exactly. In the dark. Let's check together, guys. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna call here. Um, Constanza to read the first one. Okay, just a second. There we go. Okay, Constanza. I think we're, uh, we're. I think we are on the verge of a full scale riot. We can tell the crowd that pay for much longer. Okay, number two, Fatima. Sorry, but everyone's feeling slightly out of sorts today. We are all in the same boat, workers and management alike, uh, worried about losing our jobs. Number three, uh, okay. Now I want you guys to raise your hand if you wanna to come to the mic and participate. Okay, I have here, um, okay, uh, Talad. Come on to the mic. Number three. We were at a loose end on Sunday, nothing planned, so on impulse, we decided to get in the car and head for the beach. Very good. Okay, now let me see here who else. Okay, I have Constanza, I have Fatima. Okay, Joshua Bello. Come on to the mic, number four. The border area is out of bounds to journalists. Completely of limits, I have no idea why. I'm, a, I'm as much in the dark as you. I'm as much in the dark as you, that's right. Very good. Now let us see. What is each situation? What is each uh, situation in exercise 1B? Who is talking to whom? Who is talking to whom? Complete the person's response for each sentence. Then we should what?
You can, it's your own answers. You can make up your answer. Then we shed what? The question is, what is each situation in exercise 1B and who is talking to whom? Who is talking to whom? Who is talking to whom? I think a policeman. A policeman, a police officer, a cop, or who else do you think? They're talking to whom? A police officer is talking to whom? What do you think? It might be a police officer talking to a higher ranking uh, officer or a media reporter yeah. at a protest or it might be a, a disturbance where things are getting out of hand. And number two, number two, who is talking to whom? Number two, sorry, but everyone's feeling slightly out of sorts today. We're on the same boat, workers and management alike, worried about losing our jobs. Maybe I'm to his boss. Maybe. Employee to his boss. Yeah. Someone who works in a company mm -hmm. talking to his partner or spouse or wife or husband, friend or family member. It might be number three. Who is talking to who? We were at loose end on Sunday, nothing planned. So on impasse, we decided to get in the car and head for the beach. Hello, friends. Friends, fellow students mm -hmm. or friends talking about the previous weekend. Yes. The weekend ahead. What about number four? Who is talking to whom? What do you think? The border area is out of bounds to journalists, completely off limits. I have no idea why I'm as much in the dark as you. Might be a journalist, right? Journalist. Talking to another journalist. A journalist talking to another a journalist. And Neither know why the, the order is in, in, in place. Neither know. Okay, so we have here the... Okay, um, suggested answers. Let's check it out. Police officer or prison officer talking to a higher ranking officer on a media reporter or a protest or a disturbance where things are getting out of hand. Number two, someone who works in a company or downsizing, talking to his or her partner, spouse, friend or family member. Number three, a person talking to a colleague, fellow student or friend about the previous weekend. And number four, a journalist talking to another journalist, neither know why the order is in place. Here we go. Now, let's get down here. We have money idioms. Cover exercise 1B and look at the pictures. How could you complete the idiom, idioms? I have two. The tip is the picture. The tip is 
the picture. Come on, you can do it. It start with the letter F, similar to, to the picture you seen. I had to? Fork. Fork, Fork what? Fork, F-O-R-K. trying to shoot. <laughs> Fork out. Fork out is the answer. I had to fork out, okay, I had to fork out 60 euros for the ticket. Okay, we are going to check the definitions, guys. Hold on there, okay. Uh, let's just try to guess here the, these idioms, okay, according to uh, exercise 1B. So I had to fork out 60 euros for the ticket. Number two. The, the what? It start with the letter S, two words. Smart what? The smart? You see in the picture, come on, you see in the, the picture, smart what? Come on, guys. What is, what is, what's um, what's this? What are these? Papers? Nope. Smart what? Banknotes. Okay, so they're smart money. Smart money. So these are money. Smart money is the answer. The smart money is on the driverless car. It's the best investment you can make. Smart money. Now, number three. She's? She's? Come on. Raking? Raking what? Money. Raking in the money. Raking in. Raking in the money four words from her new cafe it's become so popular raking in the money now number four i'm letter s regular verb i'm Strapped. I'm strapped. What is the preposition? Phrasal verb. Strapped what? I'm strapped. S T R A double P E D. Strapped. Phrasal verb. Strapped what? Strapped to, strapped out, strapped for, strapped in, strapped on. What do you think? Off, for out. Four. None of them. Four. <laughs> four, that's right, you nailed it. I'm strapped for cash <laughs> at the moment. So can I owe you, can I owe you? Jen is traveling. Jen is traveling. Take a look at the picture. That's the tip. Preposition. It started with two, uh, with a preposition, then an article.
What's this? What's this, guys? This is a shoe. Strings. Okay. Strings. These are shoes, and these and this is a. Uh, what's this? What's this called in English? Come on. I forget it. Shoe string. This is a shoe string. Shoe string. Okay. This is a uh, one of the pair of, of a shoes. And this and this is a shoe string. So Jen is traveling on a shoe string. Jen is traveling on a shoe string. Number six, come on, Al, that's easy. What's the man doing? Frazzle verb, it starts with P. Day four? Nope. P come on, guy, that's a very use Useful phrasal uh, idiom here. It's a phrasal verb and, and also an idiom. It's very useful. Oh, what is the idiom that we use to say that I'm going to pay for you? I'm going to pay the bill. Oh, Pick up, Nancy said. You're right, Nancy. Good job. I'll pick up the tab. I'll pick up the tab. Okay, now let's check together the answers, guys. And we are going to check, okay, the definitions. Don't worry. There we go. I had to fork out 60 euros for the ticket. The smart money is on the driverless car. It's the best investment you can make. She's raking in the money for, uh, from her new cafe. It's become so popular. Number four, I'm strapped for cash at the moment. So can I owe you? Can I owe you? Jan is traveling on a shoe string she hardly has any money at all. I'll pick up the tab. I'll pick up the tab. Now let's check here, okay? Um, let's check here the definitions together. You can also share your ideas, okay? You can also share your ideas uh, for the definitions. But this is the, okay, exactly definition for these idioms. Okay, so on a shoestring without spending much money. So you have one to six, okay. Uh, match the idioms A to F in bold with sentences one to six in exercise 1A. So we have on a shoestring without spending much money so it's number, that's number five. five. Jen is traveling on a shoestring. She hardly has any money. Okay, B, strapped for cash to have little or no money available. That's the meaning of strapped for cash. I'm strapped for cash at the moment. So can I owe you? Can I owe you? Can I pay you later? That's the definition that it says here. Can I pay you later? Can I owe you? Okay, I'll pay you later. Okay. Uh, now the smart money is on, says, experts uh, think uh, this is the best choice. C. Number two. The smart money is on the driverless, uh, driverless car. It's the best investment you can make. So expert think, experts think this is the best choice. That's a definition. And number two, pick up the tab. 
Number six, I'll pick up the tab. I'll pay the bill for something, especially when it's clearly not your responsibility. Rake in the money to make a lot of money without trying too hard. She's raking in the money from her new cafe. It's becoming so popular. So raking the money means to make a lot of money without trying too hard. Now, what's the meaning of fork out? Spend money, not because you want to, but because you have to. I had to fork out 60 euros for the ticket. I had to spend money, not because you want to, but because you have to. Okay, that's the mean of fork out. So you spent money. I didn't want to, but I had to. I had to spend it. Okay, so these are uh, the idioms, the definitions of the idioms, of these idioms. Let's go to the next part. Here we go. Match the idioms in bold with pictures A to F. So we have the pictures here, A to F. Take a look at the pictures A, B, then we have C, D, E, and F. Okay, here we go. Olivia's parents' return was hanging over her head. A, B, C, D, E, or F. Maybe D. Maybe D. Come on. No, C. C. Olivia's parents' return was hanging over her head. Can you scroll down? Yep. Body idioms. Come on, guys, you can do it. Me and Fatma tried. It's the other turn. <laughs> okay, come on, guys. What do you think? You can use the chat section or raise your hand. What about number two? I'm going to give you some time to think about it. Come on, guys. Sam and Jam started on the wrong, started on the wrong food. The last one, F. F? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what about the second? Uh, number two, two is, is D. And two, Nancy said two that two is D. Nancy is saying that two is D. Okay, I want to, let's finish that. Constanza, what do you think? Two, two, is, two is F because uh, the caf um, caf cafe um, dropped on their skirt. 
Okay, and what about three guys? Come on, three. A. A. A, uh, okay, three. Team was head and shoulders above the, the rest of us. And what about four? Let's check here the chat section. Students say that three option is A. Anna likes to fly in the face of a convention. E. E? We'll be pleased to see the back of Fluffy. Come on, a Fluffy. We'll be pleased Pleased to see the back of Fluffy. B, what Nancy said B, let's play it by ear, depending on the weather tomorrow. Let's play it by ear, depending on the weather tomorrow. What do you think? C, student said a C, let's play it by ear. C, everyone's going with him, with him or her, come on. Six, let's play it by ear, depending on the weather tomorrow. Okay. Uh, letter, let's play it by ear depending on the weather tomorrow. It's letter C. Okay, to see the back of Fluffy, to see the back of Fluffy, number five is letter B. Okay, it's letter B. Let's check here, letter B. You see there, B. Okay to see the back of Fluffy, we'll be pleased. Anna likes to fly in the face of convention number four, it's letter E. That's right, letter E. And head and shoulders above the rest of us, number three, that's letter A. And number two, Sam and Jen started on the wrong foot. It's letter F, started on the wrong foot. And Olivia's parents return was hanging over, was hanging over her head. Um, that's letter D, that's letter D, was hanging over her head. Let's check together that, let's see. There we go. So number one is D, picture D, was hanging over her head. F, number two, Sam and Sam started on the wrong food. So they started on the wrong food. And three, it's A. Tim was head and shoulders above the rest of us. Four, Anna likes to fly in the race of convention, likes to fly in the face of, okay, in the face of convention, letter E. We'll be pleased to see the back of Fluffy. This is B. 
And then we have, let's play it by ear. Depending on the weather tomorrow, that's letter C. Now, using each sentence so it has a similar meaning, using the words in the brackets, the figures contracting are currently understanding face. What's the sentence? The figures what? Come on. Fly in the face of? Fly in the face of our current understanding. Number two. I'm going. I'm going to decide. I'm going to what? To, to play it by ear. To play it by ear, exactly. To play it by ear. Now, number three. My exam results, I'm so worried about them. Had, what's the idiom? My exam results are in the shoulders above really hanging over my head. Okay. It's hanging. Yeah, you're right, man, uh, student. Okay, you're right, student. Hanging over my head. Hanging over my head. My exam results are really hanging over my head. Number four, we begin our relationship really badly. Food. Wrong food. We started? Our relationship. Uh, on wrong, the wrong food. On the wrong food. Very good. Or we can say the opposite. Our relationship started on the wrong food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, number five. Lydia's, Lydia's head and, sh and I'm almost giving you the answer. Lydia's head and head and shoulders are both. Mm -hmm. Far better than the other candidates. Is head and shoulder, head and shoulders. Yep, head and shoulders above, head and shoulders above the other candidates. Mm -hmm. Number six, I'm very glad that Pat has left. I'm very glad. To, I'm very glad to see the back of Pat. The back of Pat. Yes, <laughs> the back of Pat. I'm very glad to see the back of Pat. It's coming here, you know. It is? It's yeah. coming here too. <laughs> Let's check together. There we go. Okay, number one. Okay, Fatima, you read number one to us. Okay. The figures uh, contradict our current understanding phase. Uh, the figures fly in the face of our current understanding. Number two, Fatima. Going to decide oh. what. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to decide what to do during the meeting, not before, year. Uh, I'm going to play it by ear during the meeting, not before. Number five, uh, number four, I mean, Constanza. We began our relationship really badly. Food. We started out our relationship on the wrong foot. Number five. We, we skipped three. Mm -hmm. And number five, uh, uh, Constanza, go ahead. Lydia's far better than the other candidates. Head, shoulder, shoulders. Lydia's at the shoulders above the other candidates. Okay, now Nancy, number six. I'm very glad that Pat has left back. I'm very glad to see the back of Pat. Yeah, the back of Pat. That's right. I'm very glad to see the back of Pat. Oh, I'm sweating here, guys. I, it's, let me check here. It's 40 degrees Celsius now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Getting hotter and hotter here today. <laughs> Just a moment. 
in Italy it too. Yeah. 40 degrees. 30. In Sicily, not in. Uh, oh. It's spoiling. Yeah, it is. And what about here, Egypt? Here, in Egypt. Uh, it's the, the, the beginning of winter. It's around 20 Celsius, give or take. Oh. <laughs> Lesson 2.2, education. Match an item, group A, with uh, one from group B to make a compound noun. Continuous assessment. Come on. Virtual what? What do you think is virtual learning what? Virtual learning what? Environment. 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 Very good. Blended what? Training. Learning. Vocational training. Mm -hmm. What else? Oh my, that's again. Vocational. Let's go to vocational. Blended learning and vocational. Training. Yeah, that's vocational training. Tutuition. Fee. fee, that's right, tuition fee. Okay, external. Department. Nope. Loan. Try again. Loan. Uh, nope. Accreditation. Yeah, accreditation. External accreditation. Student what? Learning. Nope. Try again. Assessment. Nope. <laughs> lawn. Student lawn. Continuous what? Assessment. It's there. <laughs> you didn't say it. I say it first. So let's check it together. Virtual learning environment, blended learning, vocational training, tuition free, external accreditation, student loan, um, continuous assessment, rate learning, okay, and rate learning. Rote, rote learning, I mean, rote learning. Okay, here we go. Write the compound nouns next to the definition. Money paid to a university or college for its courses. What? Institution fee. Yes, to tuition fee. To tuition fee. Now, number two. Come on, number two. Money borrowed, borrowed from the government or a bank to finance studies. Uh, Nancy said students lawn. That's right, Nancy. Students lawn. Now number three. A web, uh, no, judging ability by a person's coursework 
rather than by an exam. Judging ability by a person's coursework rather than by an exam. Conti? Continuous assessment. Yes, continuous assessment. Number four, a web-based study platform for the digital aspects of a course. Come on. Virtual learning. Hmm? Virtual le learning. Yeah, virtual learning environment, environment. Number five, learning based on the skills needed to do a particular job. Welcome in, Arnie. Learning based on the skills needed to do a particular job. Vo? Vocational. Uh... Vocational what? Training. Yes, vocational training, vocational training. Okay, number six, a combination of online and face-to-face -face studying. That's easy, come on. Blended learning. Blended learning, that's right. The memorization of information based on repetition. Ro, roti, roti what? Roti learning, guys. Ro, uh, roti learning. Number seven, a roti learning. R O T E, root, root, learning, root. Learning, the memorization of information based on repetition. Number eight, objective confirmation of someone's standard by an independent person or organization. Number eight. External accreditation. External accreditations, that's right. Which of these do you have experience of? Which, which of these do you have experience of? Blended learning each day. Blended week. learning? Yes. And? Virtual learning environment. Student tuition, stu uh, student uh, lawn, I mean. Tuition fee, yes, tuition yes. fee too. Tuition fee, student lawn. Continuous assessment. I think we all have gone through that. Mm -hmm. Let's check together here. Here we go. Number one, two tuition fee. Number two, student loan. Number three, continuous assessment, virtual learning environment. Number four, Vocational training number five, blended learning number six, real learning number seven, the memorization of information based on repetition. This is a good one. I use this method to teach English a lot. And also objective confirmation of someone's standard by an independent person or organization, external accreditation. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I am going to post this lesson with all the answers on my Facebook page. So you can check it out later. Okay, and get the PDF lesson. Okay, thank you uh, very much for joining. I wish you all a good ending morning. It's morning, it's still morning here uh, in my country, but I wish you a good and in morning or afternoon or evening, okay, or a good night there. 
Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you tomorrow at the same time, 10 or 10.30, I'll be starting the class. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you. And thank you um, for replying to my question. Okay, my pleasure. It's a pleasure to help. Okay, see you guys, uh, take care, peace out.